I am so, so excited for this conversation. Yes. This is like, oh, thank you so, so much for being on again. Um, I cannot thank you enough. If you guys were on the first SOS chat, um, it was absolutely amazing. And shout out to Instagram for deleting the video before I could download it. Like, really? Like, you know how Instagram is. is. Right? Uh, so we are excited to have you guys. If you guys are not familiar, my name is Jay Monroe. I am the creator of The Slay Me, which is a self-care uh, membership for pretty much anyone who suffers from imposter syndrome and self-sabotage. And it helps them to build their confidence, get rid of that self-doubt, um, get rid of those feelings that cause you to just really think you're not good enough. Um, hey, Deronda. And um, also, I, don't, I do not have it with me, but y'all will know that I was just featured in Essence Magazine, the July-August issue, hashtag page 85. Yes. <laughs> Again, yes. Shout out to you being in Essence. Yes. Like, all of it, all of it, all of it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm Natasha. Uh, I have a brand that's called Online and Her Allure. It's a women's empowerment brand. Um, right now, I'm actually in the middle of rebranding, but I will be officially back on New Year's Day. Yes, so very excited about that. Yes, and um, that's. That's really that's really it. You can find me at a, the Alignment Sis. I did change my name, um, but I have a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, as well. So yeah, that's just a little bit about me. But I'm so so excited to be back on here with you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. Like you guys, the conversation. If you guys did not tune in last time, you about to get blessed. You about to get blessed in your life. Um, so just want to prepare y'all. Y'all might need to get a notepad. Like, Put it in your mental Rolodex or something because the last conversation was so good. So this good. This conversation is going to be geared more towards feeling stuck in your purpose or while pursuing your goals. So if you ever had that feeling, or if you have that feeling there where you're feeling like you don't know which direction to go in, you're confused at where you are, or you're just like, where am I? I don't even know where I am. Um, or if you're going in one direction, you don't know if that's the right direction you should be going in. Going in, this is the conversation for you. So make sure you guys share with, with your followers um, and invite them to the conversation. And so, Natasha, let's jump right into it. <laughs> when we last spoke, I know you were taking a break from um, aligning her mm -hmm. So what led you to um, taking a step back and how has that looked for you in terms of self-care? Oh, <laughs> are we jumping right into it? <laughs> Um, well, so I took a break. I, I started aligning her lawyer in February. Mm -hmm. Um, and I decided to take a break in August because I'm actually finishing my last year of grad school. Um, and to be honest with you, it just got to be a lot. Like I thought I could do both and I couldn't. <laughs> and I think that sometimes that's just a conversation that you have to have with yourself that you can't necessarily do everything at one time. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't do it ever. It just can't happen all at the same time. Um, and so really with the break, I've been able to honestly figure out what I want Alana and her Lord to be. Um, at first, it was like an overall women's empowerment brand. But I think when I come back, I really want to focus on anxiety and because that's something that I've dealt with my whole life and I've been meeting a lot of women who in different ways deal with some form of anxiety and that stop them from, you know, accomplishing things that they want to accomplish. So um, when I come back, that's going to be the focus. But to be honest, I have discovered so much about myself throughout this break. Um, I've even started working on my book, my book slash journal. Um, okay. and so, it's, it's just been very eye-opening for me, and I'm actually so happy that I took this break. Um, at first, I was very hard on myself about taking a break. I didn't want to be stagnant or not taking a break, but sometimes it is necessary to you know, regroup and regain focus, so yeah. 
And we do that a lot, like feel guilty for taking a break. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why do we do that? Like we feel like we have to keep going. Like that leads to overwhelm and leads to burnout. And yes. it's like we don't have to, you don't have to, yes, it's okay to push yourself, but you don't want to push yourself into anxiety. You don't want to push yourself into exhaustion, you know, burnout. You don't want to push yourself so hard and just remembering to give yourself permission to take a break and not feeling like you have to do so much in order to take that break. Like, well, I haven't done this, so I don't really deserve a break. No, you deserve a break regardless of that. So mm -hmm. just, I'm so glad that you allowed yourself to take a step back and just reevaluate so that you could be more level-headed and more clear in your thinking and, you know, rebrand the way that you wanted to. Because if you had, let's say you just had kept going, then no telling what those feelings would have led to being incorporated into your rebrand. Absolutely. The direction that you're going. So I absolutely love that. Um, and this chat, the SOS chat, if you guys are not familiar, is a conversation on how to overcome self-sabotage and incorporate more self-care into your life, into your daily routine, into your relationships, into your business, in every area of your life. And so in your business, Natasha, how do you feel like you self-sabotage the most? Do you, and do you find that that spills over into other parts of your life? Oh, absolutely. I think as a whole, um, people don't realize that self-sabotage can really hold you back in all different areas of your life. It can hold you back um, relationship-wise, career-wise, um, friendship-wise, just even down to like the little things that you do on an everyday basis. Um, and for me, one thing that I kind of had to work on as far as self-sabotage, especially with taking the break, at first, there was like this little voice, and I kind of spoke on it last time, to where it was saying that, oh, you're taking a break, so you might as well not even come back. Like, you might as well just don't do under her allure, don't do it at all. People are going to forget about you. There's no point in coming back. And honestly, I've gotten to the point, and this is going to sound so crazy, but I've been able to really tell that voice to shut the hell up. <laughs> Like, we're not doing that. We're not doing yes. that. We, we gotta, we have goals. And yes. it's okay if it takes longer for those goals to happen. And then I will tell you, I've also got rid of this imaginary time clock that I have in my <laughs> life. And I've just really been allowing things to flow. And sometimes when you allow things to flow, a lot of people interpret that as you just taking your time, but really there is so much beauty in taking your time because the more you force it, the more God is not going to let it happen. So you really just got to take your time and do what feels right. And before you know it, you'll be sitting in the midst of something that you pray for. Woo! Come on, come on, preacher! <laughs> we just started. <laughs> um, and then I also just takes a lot of the pressure off to say, like, I don't have any deadlines. Like, yes, I have goals. I mean, it's great to set deadlines for goals, don't get me wrong. Absolutely. But having that flexibility to say, like, I don't have to have this done by the end of the year. I don't have to have this done by quarter one of next year. Like, I can take my time, and when it's ready, when everything is right, then I can do it. When everything falls into place, or even when I feel mentally ready to do it. Because sometimes it's not always about the work, it's about preparing yourself. So it's like, okay, am I in the headspace to even do this right now? Forget putting out something for everybody else. How am I treating myself? Am I, pleasing? Am I you know, well enough? Is my self-care tank filled for me to be able to execute this vision that I have? So I absolutely love that you are giving yourself permission to just let that flow and not want to force that. And also when you do force that, self-sabotage comes into play a lot of the times. Yes, it does. Sets in, overthinking sets in, people pleasing, we want to make sure that we get this out for everybody else or make sure that we do this for them. And it's like, no, you don't have to do that. Absolutely. So I absolutely love that. And how would, would you say you self-sabotage the most in that or in your business? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I really but before I answer that I really want to highlight something that you said about us not 
making sure that we're like so basically making sure that our mental health is good when we are going after these goals because I feel like that's so important because sometimes and it's something that I see a lot we think that when we get to this goal or this place Mm -hmm. instantly we're going to feel so happy but we don't pay attention to how we treat ourselves in the in the in the getting there and so I love how you said that you have to make sure that you are mentally ready and happy to put out this because what's the point of putting out something if it almost killed you to do it if you don't feel you don't feel happy about it right um and then you start to lose your love for it and if if it's not something that you love doing what's the point of doing it and then that too when you start to when it starts feeling like it's becoming a task like i said you don't put your all into it their passion is not there that's going to show up in the result of what you're creating. That's going to show up in the goal that you're pursuing. So if you're just like, that's like going to a job that you hate every day. And it's like, you do know you can find another job. Like, you don't have to find that. You don't have to keep going to that same job that you hate. Hey, Tisha. Hey, Shanti. Uh, you don't have to keep going to that same job that you hate. And people are just, they just mad because they don't like their job. Ma'am, get another job. Find a job that you like. Like, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really that simple. And I hate when people act like they are stuck in a position, and we about to get on this topic right now, stuck mm. in a position that they don't have to be. You're yeah. stuck because you're choosing to stay there. So you're choosing to stay in this way. Why? Is that a place of comfortability? Or is it that you are fearful of stepping into something else? Or is it that you like faith that you don't think that God can bless you with something else? So mm-hmm. it definitely shows an effect you mentally and physically. And physically. Let's not yes. talk about physically. Yes. Stress wears on your body, your mental health, your physical health, like all of that. You're getting headaches, you're feeling nauseous. Like, that's mm-hmm. important to any nine to five. Like, I'm just like, my spirit is drained. <laughs> <laughs> it just drains my spirit. Like, yes. it's just not for me. I've known since middle school that I was not meant to work for anybody. And I promise y'all that I always felt like that. It's, it's true. It took so many. And speaking of stuck, I will tell you that I felt stuck in 9 to 5. Mm. In 9 to 5 where I had to to do that. It's like, well, Lord, how am I going to make money? I have to get a, a job. What do you mean? And so every path that I've taken has led me to where I am now. To where it's like, no, you should be working for yourself. Like, you have this feeling since middle school for a reason. You should be working for yourself. You should be pursuing something that makes you happy, that you don't get up and hate every day. So, getting out of that mentality that I don't have to stay there and just trusting God has led me to not feeling stuck and feeling like I only have one option. When you feel stuck, you feel like you only have one option. So expanding your options to say, this is not the only way. It's going to help you get out of that and to help you find a new path that you're supposed to be doing so that you can actually be happy. Like life is meant to be lived. We do not enjoy it enough. Like we live so so routinely in day to day. Like we get up, get ready for work, we go to work, we come home, go to sleep, eat, whatever, watch some shows, and then you got to do it all over again. A re- recurring cycle, and it's like you're not making time for self care, you're not making time for joy, you're not making time for your friends, your family, your kids, your husband, you're not mm-hmm. making time for your own happiness, your hobbies, the things that you want to do. So it's like life is supposed to be full of those things, life is not meant to be work, 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 work. Absolutely, like Absolutely. I need play, I need, I need mm-hmm. my life to be more play than work. Yes, yes, yes. But I also think, and hi, Sydney. Um, hi, Sydney. I also think that a lot of times we are scared to do something that is not the norm mm-hmm. um, because we yeah. are, even for me, and, and, I, and I'll speak personally, I grew up and it was, you need to get a job. Well, you need to go to college. If you go to college, you're going to get a good job. If you find a good job, you're going to stay there. And until you're like 65, get retired, <laughs> and that's it. And I'm just like, that's not that does not sound fulfilling. No. And that's not to say that's like you know people don't enjoy their nine to five. Right. But even now, I'm in school for school counseling, and I'm a school counselor right now. But 
And I, I'm so blessed, so thankful to have this job. But I know, I already know I'm not staying there because I got a taste of what it was like to work for myself over the summer and to really be creative and do women's empowerment and to do my podcast. And I miss it so much. Yeah. And I know that that's where I'm supposed to be. And so right now I'm kind of like in a space where, okay, I started this degree, so I need to finish it. And I'm graduate in May, so we're going to finish. It's going to be right there. Right. It. But I already, I can't even really say if I'm going to be working as a school counselor next year because I have so many, I have so much faith in my brand and what God has shown me that I'm really about to go after this thing. Come on. And I have gotten to the point, I don't even really care if anybody else understands it because some people might look at it like you just graduated why are you going over here doing this other dream but it's because that dream keeps yeah. me up at night and that's really that's where I'm at that's what I want to do and so I think just sometimes we're scared of breaking the norm but we really whatever lights you up inside you really have to go for it you have to you have to go for it yeah and so I love I love what you said though I really really love how you said that you always knew that a nine to five was just not you mm -hmm. and it's weird because my whole life I thought that college and this is not to say that you know college and all of that mm -hmm. is not you know important but I I don't I don't wake up and love my job I want to wake up and love what I yeah. do every single day yeah. every day because you're yeah. not promised tomorrow yeah and so if you if you don't wake up to a life that you love then what's the point and so mm -hmm. that's why I say you inspire me all the time because you just really get up and you go for it and that's where i'm at right now in my life so yeah i absolutely love that and thank you fear of the unknown yes shaza said if you don't wake up to a life that you live that you love then what's the point say that yes it's yes. like why you have the choice and i think sometimes we limit ourselves in thinking like i said what options we have and like shaza said fear of the unknown and it's like you're limiting your options before you can even give your, yourself a chance to bloom and fully live and enjoy life. Like, just because you've seen things done one way or you've seen your parents or other people in your family or friends, like, when they go to work, they do this, they go to, went to college, they come home, they do this, they got married, they had kids. No, you do not have to follow the standard. Create your own standard. I am a big person on following your, creating your own rules and following your own path. Like, I'm so not traditional in the way that I do things how I want to do them. Like, forget what everybody else is doing. Forget what has been done for 50 years and all this. I don't care. If I don't love the process and I don't love it, if I'm not going to do it. And I love that you say, I want to wake up and love my job every single day. And going to a 9 to 5 for me, I know that that's not going to and so just knowing that difference, and I'll tell you guys, I told you guys before, if you're not familiar, I'll tell you how I first knew I became an entrepreneur. Middle school, right? So these guest speakers, you guys, I wanted from the swap meet, super cute white guest speakers, and I asked my dad for them, shout out to him. He told me that I had to use my own money, my job, my job. He said I had to use my own money to buy these speakers, right? So... Went to middle school. I went to school. This is middle school, you guys. Me and my, my friend decided we was gonna steal candy out of the teacher's closet and sell it. <laughs> now, he didn't care. He did not say how I had to get the money. He didn't say get a job. He just said get the money. So I got the money, y'all, and I got my sneakers. <laughs> but we got caught stealing candy. Hey, guys. We got caught stealing candy. I got suspended. I probably got a whooping. I know it's on punishment for sure. So my dad was like, you don't steal nothing from I said, well, you said I had to get my own money. You didn't say how. So listen. But so after that, after I got off the punishment, I had my dad buy me some stickers and the layers to get keychains. And I sold layers and keychains. Uh, layers. I sold the layers, uh, the keychains made out of layers. I would ask people if they wanted round or square, how many colors they wanted. I would ask them if they wanted a short, medium, or long. I would charge them, it's giving creative feet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> so 
So I had all these options for people, and I would go take an orders like what kind of you know keychain do you want because you can hang on their backpacks and stuff like that. We love a young entrepreneur. Hello. Yes. <laughs> and so I also sold stickers to put on, you know, the thick folders that you guys had like in school. I sold stickers for people to put on their folders. So I had <laughs> regular stickers for a quarter. I had the medium sized stickers for fifty cents, and then the ones with the glitter were a dollar. So I was like, you gotta come up off of some money if you want these stickers or if you want these keychains. <laughs> I was gonna cut up, y'all. So that's how my entrepreneur journey started. And every since then, I'm like, I'm not going to the 95. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. So well, that was absolutely, but it was, it was kind of refreshing to have that experience and then where I am now and why that experience happened because it's full circle now. Mm. So I, I, I know my first instinct, I see my dad going to work day in and day out. I don't know why my first instinct was not to get a job. Come on, Variety. Okay. I don't know why my first instinct, well, I do know why. My first instinct was not to go to work. And it was like, you know, my first instinct is the instinct that God gave me, which is uh, entrepreneur, creative, and a do it on my own. And that's what I did. So to be where I am now, it totally makes sense that that happened then. So it's like, oh, okay. And pieces like that, that in your journey, they come together and they fit to be like, oh, wow, God, I see why you have me at this job. I see why you had me being a counselor because I'm going to have to counsel women that work with AIDS, that have anxiety. I'm mm. going to have to incorporate that into what I want to do, what you're calling me to do. Yes. So yes. I absolutely love it. And I know we talked before and you mentioned feeling stuck in where you are now. Obviously, that's changed in where you feel you're supposed to be. And can you tell us why you felt stuck in that position? Um. <laughs> I think I think I felt stuck because I was looking at my life as to where it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be, and not instead of what it is. And I feel like sometimes, especially if you are somebody who has a lot of goals, you have a lot of dreams, you have all these things, sometimes you get so focused, and I'm trying to say this the right way, sometimes you get so focused over there Mm-hmm. you don't pay attention to who you are right here. Ooh. And if you're not able to look at the woman right now, who you are right now, you're not going to be able to ever meet the woman that's over there. You got to nourish to <laughs> So it's, it's, and I'm trying to tell you, I, I just turned 27 in July and I feel like after my 27th birthday, it was like a, I feel like God was taking a veil off of me and really making me look at who I am. Come on, Pastor. Come on, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say, it's this way. That's the collection plate. Where's the collection plate? Put yeah. the cash at. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, it's, but it's, it's, it's been, honestly, I, I'll be honest with you, me not feeling stuck anymore has really came from more prayer and more just talking to God. Like I talked to him so much and so much more than I used to talk to him. And I really feel like sometimes God will take you and he will make you feel stuck until you look to him and not to everybody else and not to everything else. So girl, I'm trying to tell you, it's been, yeah. yeah. He really will, girl. He will. He will. Don't have me get up and do my chicken dance and shout out here. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're preaching right now. Come on, me. I was seeing this message. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, I mean, but, but the thing is about self discovery and even just feeling stuck and self sabotage, it really is like a journey. All of it is really a journey. And that's why my podcast, The Journey Home, that's why I called it The Journey Home because I feel like a lot of times, we are all just really trying to find our way back to who we are mm-hmm. after we have been out in the world and the world tries to form and tell us who we should be. Yes. Um, and so even with you, would be in knowing that you wanted to do entrepreneurship and then trying to do the nine to five and you just knew that wasn't you, you going back to entrepreneurship, that's you going back home to who you are. To Ooh, yourself, you know? So <laughs> it's, it, it's, 
it's we're all on a different journey you know yes. and that's something that i've been realizing but i knew i told you this other day i knew after i turned 27 i knew god was not playing with me because i just felt very different after my birthday and then i took that break and i've been like just learning so much i've been half of this journal is full just from writing some of it is for my book my journal and so i'm just very excited for what god is doing but i really think that he had to make me stuck or stay still for a minute take that break in order to talk to me and now when i tell you i'm ready to come back i'm ready to come back come so, on now yeah. come yeah. on now <laughs> <laughs> right here, you better come on you're preaching good today thank you preacher let's see okay so we're going to get into it so we're going to get into it God will have you feeling like you're stuck so that he can talk to you, so that he can minister to you. Because if you didn't feel stuck, you probably wouldn't have your ears not tuned to him enough mm. that he get your attention for what he's trying to do with you. So yeah. if you're so laser focused on the goal and you're just going in one direction and this is not the direction that you're supposed to be going, if God wants your attention, baby, listen, he will get your attention. When you get it, yes. One way or the other, he is yes. going to get your attention. So just that feeling of changing your perspective to I'm stuck, changing that to what is God trying to say to me? How is mm. God trying to pour into me? How mm. is God trying to pour into me so that I can pour out to my business, into my relationships, to my family, my friends, my kids, my husband? How is God trying to pour into me so that my cup is full, so that it runs over into everything else that I'm doing? So mm. changing that perspective and looking at it like that is like, okay, there's there's something here that God wants for me, that God wants to develop in me, that I'm going to need for where I'm trying to go. So it's like taking that perspective and shifting it and trying to learn the lesson in journaling. I highly encourage you guys to journal. Whether it's writing a physical journal, journal or digital, I do digitally, but any little thing I'm telling you, it helps because we store so much in our bodies that we don't even realize it. We store so much trauma, we store so much stress, we store so much anxiety, all of that is stored up. And just putting that down either on paper or digitally, that gives you a form to release some of that. Even if no one is listening, like the pages are listening. So you mm -hmm. feel like you can just pour out to that. You, therapy is great. I encourage that as well. But journaling, journaling is vital, yes. I would love to know, because, you and you know this, like, I... I love you. Like I, I, I wish you lived closer because I just. Mm, I Listen, so much. <laughs> girl, we're talking about twenty. Okay, look, I started living my life like I'm living it luxury, even though I, I'm living in little luxury. Which I like to call them because I'm like, I'm not rich, but I'm living in luxury. Yes, I'm rich yes. in spirit. I'm rich in joy. I'm rich in health. Yes. yes. And I'm, I'm rich in, in blessings and friends. I'm not money rich yes. yet. But. A plane ticket is nothing. Like, yes. we could do that. You want to come up for brunch this weekend? Hop on a plane. Okay, girl, I'll be there. Like, this, yes. this is the life I aspire to. Absolutely. We're going to make that happen. Yes. We're going to make that happen. Um, but you, I really I really would love to know, what, what made you start focusing, like, on imposter syndrome for your brand? Like, have you always done that? Or what kind of prompted that? Because I think it's, I think it's a really beautiful topic to talk about is something that is also not addressed but it's something that affects every woman regardless of what she is doing in her life regardless if she's an entrepreneur nine to five mom relationship whatever it affects all women so what made what prompted you to want to start that that is a great question and i will say before that if you guys are not familiar imposter syndrome affects 70 percent of the population that's mid women. so it's not something that is like rare. Like you said, this affects all women. Um, but initially, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know, I started off my brand was geared more towards fashion. You guys know I love fashion. I've always loved fashion. And helping women to find their style, um, build their confidence through their style. Um, I did the thrifting course. Um, you guys know all of that. Y'all know I'm a queen. Um, but... <laughs> 
doing that, I did consultations, I did makeovers, I've worked with uh, celebrity shoots, I've done a lot of fashion stuff, and what I noticed every time in doing those things with the consultations, whether it was one-on-one -on -one or group settings, was that there was a lack of confidence there um, that was really the root of why I can't find my style, why I don't feel comfortable with this, why I don't feel um, my best in this, or when I go out for this, or when I show up to this. The root issue of everything was confidence. So then I started focusing more on one-on-one -on -one consultations with uh, confidence sessions. So breaking down the thoughts, patterns, and behaviors um, that are hindering you so that you can gain more confidence. And so that transition, the Slate League, I started last year, you guys. At the start of the pandemic, I created the Slate League, which was a whole other moment of imposter syndrome. Because I'm like, we are in a pandemic. I had plans for this. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. Like, you see me working on this. Now the pandemic is for real? Yeah. But I literally started the Slate League at the start of the pandemic. And switching that, someone asked me, well, isn't that like such a big jump from going to like fashion based to, you know, confidence? And I'm like, actually, no, because the root of those things was the confidence. And once I dug down into that, the root of a lack of confidence and a lot of those things came down to self doubt and the things that we address in the slavery as far as preparing yourself to be the best version of yourself that you could possibly, possibly be and living up to your full potential. So it's mm -hmm. actually right in line. And once I started doing those one-on-one -on -one sessions, I noticed people would tell me like, I have more confidence now. And that had nothing to do with fashion whatsoever. So those we were just digging into their past experiences, digging into their beliefs, their mindset, and getting that a whole makeover and a whole shift. So that created me to, or led me to create this lady and focus on imposter syndrome because I see so many amazing women that are continuously doubting themselves. And I'm like, sis, you, do you know how amazing you are? Like, right. yes. yes. Well, I don't know. I, girl, shut up. You are amazing. Like, come on now. And so I'm just like, y'all not about to brush y'all stuff around me. I don't care if y'all, if you just, confidence is key. Hello? It's key, yes. In every area of your life, confidence is key, whether it's a job, pursuing your goals, whether it's being a mom, relationship, kids, all of that. Friendship, you need that confidence because otherwise, you're going to continually doubt yourself and you're going to stay stuck where you are. You're going to stay feeling stuck and you're not going to be anything accomplished. So that led me to focus more on imposter syndrome because I noticed the main thing, the core thing was self-doubt. The core of all of it was self-doubt. And it's like, whether it came from what they saw from other people or whether that came from the way that they grew up or maybe how their parents uh, you know, raised them or whoever raised them and just seeing other people, comparison, all of those things. And so I really wanted to focus more on that because once you have that together, oh, you can slay. Like, you can slay anything. You can slay. I always tell people, like, I'm so into fashion. I would be like, I can rock a trash bag. And people would be like, yes! Yes, yes. It's not because the trash bag is fire. It's because my confidence is. So I'm going to walk outside like, this is the baddest trash bag y'all ever seen. Like, belted honey with a little chain, like a little off-the-shoulder action. Like, get with it. Like, what do you got yes. <laughs> So, yes. it's more about that confidence and being like, okay, I can do anything. Not just fashion, but I can pursue the goals that I want to pursue. I can, you know, jump out as an entrepreneur and start my business. I can do whatever it is that I want to do with that confidence. So, that's what I really want to focus on and helping women to build that because too many people, the world of, is enough of doubting you and making you doubt yourself to be like, you're not good enough. Absolutely mm. not. We're not doing that. So if you get around me, baby, we're not doing any of that. What yes. is You're not doubting yourself. You might have a little moment. I'm going to let you have the moment. That's normal. And then I'm going to be like, okay, girl, get up. We got to go. We got things to do. This is what we need to do. Here's what we need to break down. Here's where we need to break it down. Hey, Jalali. So it's just like, we need to get this together. Your confidence is first. And once you establish that, and a lot of people, I've said this before, and something Shanti said too, is your family is your first form of community. So for a lot of people, 
That community was not built on a, a foundation of confidence. It was not built on a foundation of trust. It was not built on a foundation of respect. And so people have grown up with those insecurities and mm -hmm. taken on more insecurities than they need to just mm -hmm. from the world, from people, from their jobs, relationships. And it's like all of that affects you. And unless you work on that, you're still going to be in the same place. You're still going to be feeling stuck. So it's like you really need to dig into that and make sure that your confidence is the first thing that's up to par. Hello? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a word right there. <laughs> that's a word right there. Yes. So I'm the biggest advocate for confidence. And so I love, love, love your brand and the direction that you're going in, especially with this new direction being that focusing more on the anxiety because yes. when you lack confidence, there's so much anxiety that you have. There's so much stress that I've noticed people have. It's like you're continually doubting yourself. You're thinking the worst. That, again, causes mental and physical health issues. So we want to avoid all of that. And I don't see enough brands doing that. I see a lot of brands focusing on the physical aspect. Yes, we have therapists. But outside of therapists, I don't see any other niche of brands that are focusing on Black women in particular, just I'm speaking on us, Black women in particular, um, yes. taking care of ourselves and what self-care looks like on the inside versus yes. spas, bubble baths, face masks, candles, all of that. That's Absolutely. great. All that is great. But the inner work still needs to be done. And I don't see I don't see enough people pushing to help us to get the inner work done. And so I wanted to be the change in what I wanted to see. And so that's why I geared towards that. I, I, I love it. I love it. Because and you are absolutely right. Like, and there's nothing wrong with the candles and the bubble baths and the, the face mask. Like, I love me a good face mask. I love me a good like, skincare routine. I love it every day. But especially with women of color, I feel like sometimes we are not given the space and the opportunity to really be vulnerable and then to really also look at the traumas that we have and the things that we kind of have to carry as a race. And just as a race of women, we endure so much, not only from just other people, but also from our own people as well. Yeah. Um, and so that needs to be addressed. And the reason why I wanted to focus on anxiety is because anxiety really, it will control your whole life if you let it. And anxiety is actually a part of self-sabotage mm -hmm. because the more that you feel anxious about something, the more that you will try to avoid doing that. And you could be avoiding doing something that you really, really want to do, but you're not going to do it because you feel anxious. Mm -hmm. But the moment that you kind of realize that anxiety, being anxious, it's okay to feel anxious. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel nervous, but it's also okay to still feel nervous and do it. Just yeah. go, like, do it. And that's something that I've been learning on my own journey, you know, for myself. I mean, this was my first year working as a school counselor and I was like so nervous the first day. I was sweating and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> but in the back of my mind, I was like, Natasha, if you can't get up here and talk in front of a group of students, how are you ever going to get up and talk in front of a group of women? How are you ever going to, you know, get on a on something like this, even like this, get, even though I don't see all these people on here, how can I ever get on, you know, somebody's live or somebody's interview if I can't even talk right here? And, I, and then that's when I kind of realized that God will put you in certain things to kind of give you. Yes, I love the kids. I love the kids. I love the kids. I really do. I really do. But but God will put you in certain places so that he can really get you ready for the next chapter. And I genuinely feel like God put me in this job right now to help me with my anxiety and to help me with my confidence because now I go into work and I'm just like, boom, like whatever. I can talk okay. about people. It's all good. And I feel like now that I'm ready to come back to my brand, it's just going to be a whole different focus. And I'm I'm so happy about that. And I also just wanted to tell you that you focusing on the confidence piece in women, I feel like that's also so important because we lose that mm -hmm. throughout life. We lose that with our relationships, with our childhood. Like mm -hmm. we just met um, a lot of people don't realize your childhood can affect you all the way into yeah. your adulthood. You will be dealing with things from your parents or from whoever and wondering why that keeps showing up in other parts yeah. of your life. 
you gotta deal with that. You can't yeah. just you can't just take a bubble bath and turn on some music and it's gonna go away. You gotta sit. You gotta really ask yourself, why am I like this or why does this keep showing up or what's yeah. happening? And it's hard. It's not. It's not easy. Mm-mm. But I will say, brands like your brand, the Slay Lee, and brands like Alana Her Allure, yes, it's opening up avenues for women to for begin her. that healing, to begin that so yes we cut onions yes my boyfriend cut onions no I'm playing. <laughs> but yes yes so i i love when i tell you i love your brand i love everything mm-hmm. that you have going on and i'm so excited i know you say you was working on something yeah. i'm so excited to see what you're cooking up because i know it's gonna be fire yes you are listen i wish i could tell y'all it actually Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. And you are always so supportive. And I really appreciate. Uh, and Natasha knows this too. He's one in the chat. Uh, I really appreciate genuinely supportive people. And I am someone who has a good sense of discernment. And I can tell when people are not genuine. And when mm-hmm. people show up to try to support you or try to um, try to, you know, be in your face or you know, try to be buddy buddy with you because they want something from you or because they see where you're going or they see your potential before it, sometimes before you do. And they're like, oh, let me be friends with her or let me, you know, let me try to shout her out or let me try to do this. I see those people and it's, it's very easy for me to see. So when I come across people like you, people like Natasha as well, other people, when I see people like that, I really appreciate you guys and I, I want to let y'all know that. And I have been extraordinarily busy guys with doing things like every day I'm working on something for my business. Every day I'm working on something for my brand. And then I'll just work until I feel like, you know what, I don't feel like doing this anymore. If I'm working on something, I don't give myself time like to say I'm going to work on this for four hours or I'm going to work on this for two hours. I work until I'm not passionate about working on it at that moment. And then mm-hmm. I focus on something else. Because if my passion is not there, I'm going to give something that is not what I want to be produced that I don't want my name on, that I don't want to be associated with. So I work until mm. I literally do not feel like doing it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, we're going to something else. And so working on these different projects and things have really shown me the versatility. And it's so funny because I'm, I don't seem like I'm bragging, but because I'm very brag. I'm very humble, but I'm brag for a second. Yes. I'm actually very genius. And I say this to myself a lot. I find myself saying this out loud, out loud a lot. Like, I'm really genius. I'm really a genius. Like, I am genius. Like, and I be really genius. Like, Lord, I mean, you can give me some wisdom. And the Bible says, if you ask God for wisdom, he will give it to you. Absolutely. So I'm always asking God for wisdom. So I'm like, yes. genius. And I keep coming up with these ideas, and I'm like, oh, I love this. Thank you, Lord. Like, genius. Yes. And so, as you should, hello. Yes. Like, listen, give yourself the credit that is due. Like, give mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. more flowers. You do not have to wait for other people to acknowledge you. You don't have to wait to be awarded. You don't have to wait for to be voted most likely to whatever. You don't have yes. to wait for any of that. So, Really doing these different projects has allowed me to see the different levels and zones of my genius. Uh, and I'm actually really enjoying that. I'm enjoying the process, but I'm also like, I want this to be done already so y'all can see it. Like, <laughs> man. It's so big. But I also, I did want to say, I love that you said that you work until you not until you don't feel passionate about it. Yeah. I think that's so important because even in entrepreneurship, it's important not to drive yourself to the point of, you know, exhaustion. Yeah. So I love how you put that. And I know I know whatever you're working on, I know it's about to be fire. So I, I I'm so excited. Not having to worry about those things is such a big relief, and it allows me to focus more on self care, which is why I can share for other people. How to pour more into themselves because I've worked a 95 and still haven't poured into myself. I've worked a 95 while pursuing my business, working as an entrepreneur and still having to do that. So I can share from that from both perspectives and say, okay, this is where you need help at, or this is a self care strategy that you can implement. So I really find that that does fill into other parts of my life. Like 
if I go somewhere and I'm like, okay, this is fun, and then I'm not enjoying it anymore, I'm not going to stay just to save face. Come on, self-care. Like, I'm not going to stay just to save face. Like, oh, well, let me just stay around because I know they invited me. If I don't want to go home, I'm going home. If I want to leave, I'm leaving. <laughs> like, that's, that is it. So I do know that that still opens other parts of my life. And I absolutely love it, too, because why stay somewhere where you're not happy? That's going to have to be really stuck. I don't want to feel like I'm stuck having to entertain people when I want to go home. I don't want to feel like I'm stuck in a job that I hate because I need money. Money is not a deciding factor. God is my provider. So I don't mm. worry about money. I don't worry about jobs. Yes, I, you know, think about those things, and it's a thought that I consider, but it's not like that doesn't run my life. And you can't let money run your life to the point of, you're staying somewhere where you feel unhappy. And that is self-care to me. It's pouring, putting your, yourself first in, in any aspect, in any situation, in any scenario. Absolutely. Because people, you know, the thing is when you do, when you do, people, I feel like people don't put this themselves first because there's such a negative, um, mm. There's such a negative outlook on putting yourself first because it seems selfish, but the reality is if I'm not feeling my 100% self, I have nothing to give to you. I have nothing to give to what I'm doing. I have nothing to give to the friendship, the relationship. So me taking time to really pull back into me, that is important. And me putting myself first is important. And I love that you brought that up because really... If I could go back to say what self-care is in one word, mm -hmm. I would really say, it's not one word, but it's kind of one sentence. It's really taking time with yourself. Mm -hmm. That is self-care. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed that I have to have that. And yes, especially with Black women. Yeah. Um, I realized that I have to have that. Like, I'm, a, I'm naturally an introvert. And so if I spend a lot of time talking to people with my job I spend my whole day I'm listening to other people's issues problems the boyfriend girlfriend and broke up teacher getting on their nerves all of it or high school kids so I'm just looking at them like okay <laughs> um and so I spend so much time talking to people all day and so when I get home I literally have to have at least an hour of silence back to myself and back to Natasha nothing and that took the longest time for me to feel comfortable telling people that. Because, you know, I'm the oldest, and so my sisters would call me, or somebody else, my coworker would call me, or other people would be FaceTime me, messaging me, and I really had to say, I can't talk to you right now. Or not even that, I just don't answer my phone. And I had to stop feeling bad for that, but I realized what's the point of me getting on the phone with this person if I know I don't have the energy for it? Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that Natasha feels good I'm in a good space my energy is right and then I will talk to you mm -hmm. and I had to stop feeling bad for that because I used to feel bad for being that way but like I said I can't pull from an empty cup and if I don't feel 100% I don't have nothing to give you whatever you on the phone telling me about I have I have nothing for it because I have, <laughs> I have nothing for time to do with me I have, I have nothing to give you nothing so I, I love that you said that self-care is so important it is and I feel like like Natasha said, especially Black women, we are meant to, we're looked at as like these superhero people all the time. And I'm not trying to be nobody's superhero no more. I'm just trying to be me. I'm just trying to be me. That's it. <laughs> that is it. Right. Yes. I love that you said that too, because um, really, we don't enforce enough boundaries with ourselves. Mm -hmm. to allow ourselves to be built. And then also, I really feel like self-care is also boundaries, just like you said, because I feel like as, again, just as as women, really, as people, you have, to, you have to have that. You have to know that it's okay to have that. And I feel like people, as adults, people will make you feel bad for it. But when she said that, when, when she said that as a child, you are taught to respect people's boundaries, I'm like, that is facts because... I distinctly remember being young and not being able to touch certain stuff and don't do that and sit over there and take your shoes off, all this stuff. But now as an adult, I feel like I can't have those, but I can have those. Right. I can have it. So, you can have boundaries, yes. Yes. And I just think that's a huge part of self-care, especially, especially if you are a creative and you are an entrepreneur and you are, you know, not everybody's going to understand that, but I make sure that 
I work on my brand every day because if I don't, I'm not happy. I get unhappy. Mm -hmm. And if I'm unhappy, I don't have nothing to give to nobody else in my life. Right. Not everybody's going to understand that. But in order for me to blossom and focus right now, I had to set some really strong boundaries. And either you with it or you're not. And if you're not, I love you. God bless you. But I keep going. Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. You got you to gotta set some boundaries. So now I don't bring nothing home. I don't bring nothing Good. home. Yes. And I allow my I allow myself to set that boundary of do not check your emails, do not check anything else, leave work at work, come home, spend some time with your man, decompress, and then you know, okay. take a shower, and you come into this beauty room slash office and you work on your brand. Yes. yes. And that's my boundary. And that's why right now my phone literally said 30 minutes until wind down, wind down time because on, it goes right off. And it, yeah. uh, you you have to have that because if not. I mean, granted, my wind down is getting me prepared to work on my brand, mm -hmm. but essentially, my wind down is for me to turn off the Natasha I have to be for everybody else. I have to be the girlfriend, the big sister, the daughter, the counselor, the, mm -hmm. the co-worker, and now I am Natasha business owner, yes. brand developer, creator. In a way, it fuels me so much because I'm able to get up and work on my brand and I feel just so empowered. And every day I'm looking forward to, okay, I, I got a good three hours to work on aligning her allure and I'm good. And I know that one day this will be my reality, but I have to, you know, it's baby steps. So right. I, I really love that you, you know, you make time for your brand and you set those boundaries. Like I said, you are inspiring. Thank Hi. you. Hey, <laughs> Um, I am one thing too. I want to say thank you so much. I so appreciate that. Uh, every time, anytime like somebody tells me that they're inspired by me or like any type of like thing that helps them, I'm always like so filled because like that's what I want to do. That's what I am doing. Not what I want to do. That's what I am doing. Um, that's my goal, and I'm accomplishing that. And so that helps me to keep going to say like, okay, your work is impactful. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, but one thing I want to say too is you have a wind down. I have uh, kind of like a wind up in a sense. Um, <laughs> kind of like a wind up, but before I do any work on any of my work days, I do something that I enjoy before I work. I, I don't dive straight into work. Um, I'm the third beneficial panelist. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, come on. We're going to get you on the live too, Mia. Yeah. Um, but I definitely, I do, I make time for play before I make time for work. I make time for joy before I make time for work. So I don't immediately dive into work, especially it probably works for me because I'm not a morning person. Do not talk to me before 11, 12 o'clock. No, don't talk to me. Um, yeah. The topic is, well, girl, it's, it's been a lot of topics. But we're specifically talking about now is like winding down. Um, and create a self-care routine for yourself uh, to turn to turn things off or to turn things on. And you need a balance. Yes, yes work you do. I make time to really enjoy the day before I jump into work. Because a lot of the times, the way of the world is so conditioned to as soon as you wake up, you got to start getting ready for work. As soon as you wake up, you got to dive into doing something for somebody else. No, yes. I want to do something for me. I want to fill myself up and not have to worry about I have to fill somebody else up first. I have to get ready. I have to do this. I got to travel an hour and work and then do all of this. Um, my best is like that too. Um, but don't speak until noon. Yeah. Can you do a live dedicated to self-esteem and confidence? Oh, girl, that's what all of these are about. All of these conversations are about um, self-esteem and confidence, but I would particularly do something on that for you. Um, absolutely, because I could talk about that all day. Um, <laughs> But I want to be able to fill myself up before I have to worry about anything else. Um, so literally taking the time to like have an hour to myself, whether that's praying, worship, listening to music, um, getting on social media sometimes before I work, like um, pour your own cup first hand. Like yes. you go to your nine to five anyway and get on social media while you clock in. So I'm going to do that. I just do it before I clock in to work. 
And yeah. a lot of times my ideas and my creativity don't kick in until night anyway. So I really spend the majority of my mornings like focusing on me and just the first part of my day waking up. Um, you're welcome. And someone also said, which I thought was a really great idea, was breaking your day into quarters. Like the morning is quarter one, the afternoon is quarter two, evening quarter three, night quarter four. And so they're like, if you don't get something done in quarter one, okay, look at it as if I still have quarter two, three, and four. Like, wow. Um, I love how you're active y'all are on this live. Yes! Yes! Coming, we so appreciate you guys for tuning into this live. Um, I hope that gave you guys some insight as to where you are now and maybe if you're feeling stuck in your purpose or your passions or your goals and the things that you're pursuing. Really? I feel like I just cannot thank you enough. And really just, I, I forgot who I was telling this to. Uh, the last Ari, she was on the last SOS chat, but I really appreciate people for who they are, and so I just want to thank you for being who you are, not for what you do, not for your support or anything like that, just for who you are, um, yes. and just really taking the time to uh, build something that, and we, we both have the same vision of what our brands are, taking the time to build something um, that pours into other women, especially women of color, black women specifically. But I really, I really just appreciate you. I, the conversations are always something. I might do something like maybe with all the live guests or something. Like I, Ooh. I, I have to do something with like all the live guests or something. But um, if you guys have any questions, make sure you put those in. Thank you guys so much. Um, I so appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you follow Natasha at the Alignment Sis. Her brand is going to be relaunching very soon. I cannot wait to see what you do with your brand. Like, I'm excited to see where you go Thank and the you. direction that you're going in. Um, and I'm also excited to share the projects that I'm working on, you guys, behind yes. the scenes. Make sure you follow at the Slay League um, here on Instagram. On Twitter, I'm dropping gems daily. So make daily. sure you guys. Follow both of those. Natasha, if you want to say anything before we close out. Um, yes, I, just, I want to thank you so much. And thank you, Natasha. Um, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me back again. Like when you emailed me again, I was like, me? Um, but <laughs> because I told you, even now, I still deal with a little bit of anxiety. But I have learned so much from you just with the short time that we have kind of connected and you between between your gems your brand just who you are as a woman you just you just inspire me so much and you are welcome you're very very welcome and i just i want you to know that everything that you're doing it influences so many women especially women like me who are just now finding their voice i feel like at the age of 27 i'm just really figuring out who i am and that's crazy because i'm like i'm grown but i'm really figuring out who this grown woman is mm -hmm. and you have helped me in so many ways that you just don't even know um oh. but i'm so so excited so so excited for everything that you have coming and i just I'll, i thank you also for your continued support even with me taking a break you have been like so encouraging and so positive about it um but i am coming back i'm so excited okay. and um yes but thank you again so much for having me thank you yes you are so welcome and i really i really love these interactions with such yes so young and so humble like come on now <laughs> i can tell you how old i am i'm 72 born on 27 but um <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so young she is so young and so humble yes thank you so much natasha um, definitely check out our page. Make sure you guys follow her. Um, make sure you guys are subscribed to the Bloom Collective, which is a newsletter for this lady, um, where I'll be announcing the recap and also behind the scenes of what I'm working on. And so we will see you guys. Thank you again, Natasha. Thank you, mm -hmm. Natasha, for tuning in. Thank you, Bree, for tuning in. Everybody who tuned in, thank you so, so much. And make sure you guys stay tuned for the next SOS chat. Yes. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.